Hi students, um, in the last video we introduced the inverting amplifier with an op amp. Now let me show you an example problem of um, what one of these circuits might look like that has an input voltage connected to the inverting input to the amplifier. So um, in this example I'm gonna have all this circuitry connected to the inverting input of my amplifier and I'm going to have the non-inverting input tied directly to ground. So this is basically how you're going to recognize if it's an inverting or a non-inverting amplifier is um, is the input voltage connected to the inverting and the um, non-inverting connected to ground then this is going to be an inverting amplifier and if it's vice versa if you see an input voltage connected to the positive input with the plus and the negative is tied to ground, then you know that's going to be a non-inverting. So um, remember that almost all of the op-amp circuits are going to have a feedback loop. So here's my feedback resistor. And then between here and here, the voltage drop across this output resistor here is going to be V out. Um, so let me uh, put in some values here. Let's say that this is a 750 millivolt source and we've got a 2k ohm resistor here, a 4k ohm resistor here, suppose this is also 4k ohms, and our feedback resistor, let's say this one is 10k ohms, and then our output resistor here, let's let this be 2k ohms. Okay, so uh, there is, there's a little bit more going on here than our previous example, so what do we do? Um, well, we know that since this is tied to ground, this is going to be an inverting amplifier. So how about we do some simplification over here so that it looks similar to the problem that we looked at in the last video. So um, if we use source transformations, I can simplify all this circuitry over here. So I'm going to use a source transformation, and that is I can replace this a voltage source in series with a resistor with a current source in parallel with that same resistor. Okay, so if this is 2k ohms, this will also be 2k ohms, but then to calculate this um, current source equivalent, I'll label this I Norton, since I'm doing <clears throat> the Norton equivalent of this branch of the circuit, this is going to be my V source divided by my R Thevenin. So my V source was given as 0.75 volts. R Thevenin is 2K in this case. So here I get 3.75 times 10 to the negative fourth amps. So that's the value of this equivalent current source here. Okay, great. So the reason why I did that is because now this 2K ohm resistor is now in parallel with the 4K ohm resistor. So I can easily combine these. So my R equivalent between this, these two is 1 over 1 over 2K plus 1 over 4K. So that means I can replace these two resistors with one resistor of value 4K over 3. Okay, great. So let me do that. Now my circuit is equivalent to <clears throat> current source here of 3.75 times 10 to the negative 4 amps. And then I have one resistor here, equivalent resistor here, of value 4K over 3. And then I still have that 4K ohm resistor, and then here is where it goes into my op amp. Okay, so I want to do a simplification of these ones here. So I can do another um, source transformation. So this thing here I can replace with a voltage source in series with that resistor. And the reason why I want to do that is because I basically am popping this resistor back up to this top line, so now that resistor will be in series with that and I just simply add them together. So that's 4K over 3, that's now in series with this 4K ohm resistor. And then what's the value of this equivalent voltage source? Well this is just going to be given by taking that um, I Norton I found before, the value of this current source, times my R Thevenin, which is now 4K over 3. So here when I do this calculation, I get, um, it's nice, I get 0 0.5 volts. Okay, great, and then I just add these two together, and the sum of these is going to give me one resistor of value 16K over 3. 
All right, so now my circuit um, is equivalent to this much more simple circuit with a value, uh, um, this is my voltage source now, is 0 0.5 volts coming in. And then I have one resistor here, a value 16K over 3. And then at, from this point, I'm going into my op amp. This is going to ground minus plus, and I still have my output resistor here and my feedback loop resistor here. Okay, great. So at this point, um, I feel like I have simplified the circuit down so that I can do some nodal analysis. So let me fill this in. My feedback resistor is still 10K and this here is still 2K. So let's label these nodes. Um, I'm going to call this VA because I like to call um, the top input my A input and the bottom input of the op amp my B input. So my VA is um, the voltage drop at this location. My VB is connected directly to ground, so that's zero. I'm going to use my ideal op amp approximation, so this is going to help me in my nodal analysis. And the other node I have here, I'm going to label this as V out. So V out is um, the voltage coming out of this op amp here, and it's going from this location to ground. So V out is actually the, um, the voltage across this 2K ohm resistor. So that'll be useful because later if I'm asked for the output current, I could easily calculate that using Ohm's law as well. Okay, great, so I have my nodes labeled. At this point, I can put in my currents. I'll call this I1 and then it go, I1 goes into this node and can split down this way into IA or take the feedback loop IF. So then at node VA, my equation is I1 comes in and by KCL that splits into IA plus IF. But remember because of the ideal op amp approximation, ideal op amp approximation tells us that IA is equal to IB is equal to zero. So this thing goes away. Therefore, I have I1 is equal to IF. So same as in the previous video. And then I can replace these with my um, nodal analysis here. So this voltage difference is going to be 0.5 minus VA over the resistor between, which is um, 16K over three. I'm gonna replace this IF with VA minus V out over the resistor between, which is 10K. And then the next approximation, ideal op amp approximation I get to make is that VA is equal to VB. And in this case, since VB is equal to zero, this implies that VA is also equal to zero. So that means this is zero and this is zero. So my equation becomes Point 0.5 over 16K, I'll put the three up here because the reciprocal relationship equals negative V out over 10K. Now um, this thing I can go ahead and write this in terms of V out. V out in terms of my V in, which is 0.5, is going to be negative 0.5 times 10K over, when I have a three up here too, over 16K. So this is going to end up to be negative 0.9375 volts. Great, so I have my output voltage here. Um, so that means that I can calculate the gain. So remember the definition of gain is going to be V out over V in. So how much did our signal get amplified? If we started with V in and we ended up with V out, this ratio is going to give us what our multiplier was that was done by the op amp. So our V out, we just computed, was negative 0.9375 volts. Our V in, in this case, was 0.5. So this is going to be negative 1.875. And this is equal to um, our gain. Okay, great. So um, the process here was 
Given a circuit that looks like this, first you identify whether it's inverting or non-inverting. Inverting if the voltage input goes into the inverting uh, input and the um, non-inverting input here is tied to ground. Um, and then do circuit analysis over here to simplify if you like, or you could just go ahead and start with your node voltage method from here without doing the source transformation. You can basically pick your favorite um, circuit analysis technique to find the voltage at VA and V out. So let me know if you have questions about this example and we'll go on to some of the next um, op-amp circuits.